what is so special about bondage? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I would say there can be, so starting from intention is super important because folks can have a ton of different reasons for doing bondage and it can vary from person to person. It can vary from scene to scene, from time to time. And I think there's two interrelated aspects to this. There's motivation and the scene type or the mood. So motivations for bondage can include things like uh, sensation, can include sex, maybe it's just a turn on, right? Can mm -hmm. include sadism or masochism, you know, looking at uh, pain, can include dominance and submission, can include decoration or aesthetics. Maybe I just like to, you know, be, I like the Pretty visual rope. Uh, things like uh, technical aspects. Some people are just super into learning knots and doing the technical, uh, doing the technical pieces of ties. Uh, bonding. It doesn't have to be something sexual. You can just be hanging out with your friends, right? This can be something that is a bonding activity. Things like playfulness. Uh, and there can be lots and lots of other reasons. So those are some of the you know, potential kind of motivations for bondage. And then if we're doing a bondage scene, and this applies with yourself or with a partner, I think self scenes are also super valid and important. You know, you can be looking at something romantic that can be catch and release, can be playful, can be sexual or not, can be practice or lab time and thinking through those things. So one of the keys there is thinking about matching those expectations, right? Because if I think that I'm doing some lab time so that I can practice a new harness I learned and my partner thinks that we are doing uh, foreplay for sexy times, then we've already yeah. set ourselves up to have a bad experience before we've even started, right? If you don't talk about it, yes. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Is bondage something that you can learn yourself? Or is it something that you say like, this is something that you should definitely follow a class on? Yeah, a common question, yeah, that folks have is just how to start and where to learn. I think videos like this are a great first step. And, you know, considering if you're doing partnered or if you're tying solo and you have a spotter, which I always recommend, then watching videos like this with your partner, I think is super helpful to clarify things like intention and what you're getting out of it and those communication and safety pieces. I think once you're wanting to get into tying, there's some things you can do from videos. I always recommend in-person instruction. Many places have rope spaces or kink spaces and they're, they're way less intimidating than you'd think. Most of us who are into kink are pretty geeky people. Uh, we're pretty shy and probably just as awkward as you may or may not think you are. I know I'm a ridiculous awkward turtle out at events, so. I remember going to my first dungeon play party and being so intimidated and scared and then showing up and being like, oh, okay, everyone seems pretty chill and pretty mellow and, you know, I made some friends and uh, started volunteering, which is a great way to get involved and kind of be comfortable in the space. So classes can be a great way, socials, and sometimes places will have skill shares, which are fabulous, just learning from your peers and going to spaces where it's just really validating, going to spaces where other people are also into the types of things that you're into and that you're learning. So I, I always recommend that if, if possible for you. Uh, there's also numerous online tutorials, which can make a great additive to in-person classes. I do think that learning by self-tying uh, is a really great way to learn. Uh, I wish more people would learn that way. It always, it, it's kind of scary to me actually that people tie who have never been in rope at all. And I feel that that, I, I think it's very hard to have empathy and understanding of the bottoming role if you've never, you know, experienced any rope at all. So, I always think that it's great to, you know, learn both sides at least somewhat. And that applies for folks who only want to be tied too. you know, learning something about tying will help you with knowing more about safety will help you know about vetting people who might tie you. And, you know, it's just a really helpful thing, I think, to have some understanding of both yeah. roles. Absolutely. I think, uh, in my opinion, this goes, this goes for everything. Um, for, for, I mean, for all kinks. 
Uh, my master is always when he's he buys a new implement, the the first person that he's he's trying it on is on himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and fabulous. I think yeah. you know you gotta know what these things are and have that awareness of what these what these implements are and what the sensations. I think that's super important. Yeah, I agree with you.